All right. Um, speaking of trouble and, and reality TV trouble, it's been a while since we talked about Kim Zolciak Beerman and Croy Beerman. So they're back in the news. And of course, it's about her spending, I think it was last week or the week before, that we were talking about Kim and her getting slammed by people on social media for getting Botox and filler when she's having money troubles. But we told you, I'm sure she didn't pay for this, but it's just sort of the, you could be getting influencer pay for other things that could help you pay your bills. Well, TMZ writes this in regards to the ongoing divorce between Corey Beerman and Kim Zolciak. So Corey Beerman's divorce drama with Kim Zolciak is hitting a new rough patch. He claims she's dragging her feet on handing over important financial docs. So now he's simply exposing her, her alleged spending himself. So TMZ has obtained Croy's response to Kim's motion to compel handing over her financial docs, and he's suggesting her excuses about protecting the kid's privacy and fears he's leaking confidential information to the media are just smoke screens to keep her spending habits under wraps. This is the chart. Beerman versus Beerman, amount spent for clothing, shoes, purses, etc. during marriage. So 2016, Croy highlights... Some of Neiman Marcus, 46000 over $46,000 were spent. Some of Saks Fifth Avenue, $65,000, over $65,000 that she spent. All right, so she didn't spend any money over at the Agent Provocateur or Chanel or Versace that year. But she spent per year, according to him, $112,000. Okay, 2017, she spent $72,000 over at Neiman Marcus, $86,000 at Saks Fifth Avenue, all right, that year she spent like $158,000, sidebar, he's not even including the gambling um, allegations against her, you remember the, the gambling allegations, also, I don't even know if we can say they're allegations, because literally we see it play, we saw it play out on their reality show, 2018, she spent $68,000. It got better in <laughs> 2018. She spent $68,000 at Neiman Marcus. Saks Fifth Avenue, she spent $59,000. For that year, she spent $127,000. She did better, Croy, in 2018. She was frugal in 2018. 2019, $55,000 at Neiman Marcus, $65,000 at uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, 2019 is when she found out about Provocateur, spent $49,000 at Provocateur. She got herself some Chanel, $13,000. She got herself some Versace, $9,000. That year, she spent $192,000. She wanted to make up for what she lost in, 2000, uh, in 2018, okay? 2020, pandemic. She spent $21,000 at New York Marcus. Okay, she did better than the previous years. She was being frugal. Saks Fifth Avenue, she spent $30,000. Provocateur, she looked, she didn't spend that much. $10,000 that year. She didn't buy anything at Chanel or Versace. So in, 2000, in 2020, she only spent $61,000. If you take a look at the tally, she gets better. Look, she gets better. Ooh. All right. All right, 2021, she spent $5,000 at Neiman Marcus, nothing at Saks Fifth Avenue. Maybe they cut her off. Um, provocateur, she spent $2,000. She didn't buy anything at Chanel or Versace. 2022, she didn't spend anything at Neiman Marcus. I think they cut her off then, to be honest. Um, Saks Fifth Avenue, someone asked, did she spend or did she charge? I think she charged. This is why I think they cut her off. <laughs> so she couldn't shop at Neiman Marcus in 2022. So in 2022, uh, Provocateur, she spent $1,300 and she didn't buy anything at Chanel or Versace. So the grand total, $662,197.14. Average per year, he says, was what? $94,000. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, assuming four-year um, extra palation, extra palation, uh, three hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars, 
with a total of over one million dollars. Yeah, Keisha says, uh, 2021, the credit lines were terminated. So she stopped, she stopped using them because she couldn't use them anymore. Oh, Lord. Look, oh, Lord. All right. So um, in Croy's docs, he attached a spreadsheet of those spending habits during their marriage. And he claims that she dropped more than $600,000 from 2016 to 2023, mostly on, on swanky gear from Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth Avenue, Chanel, Versace, and Agent Provocateur. Croy also is alleging that Kim went on, uh, went big on lottery and Bitcoin, dropping a hefty one hundred and sixty-one thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars and eighty-seven cents in twenty twenty-one, and another sixty-five thousand nine hundred and sixty-six dollars and ninety-five cents in twenty twenty-two. He's making it crystal clear Kim's un unapologetic spending habits are a major factor in their divorce saga, and he's calling BS on her request for privacy by highlighting her social media updates about everything from vaginal rejuvenation to recent Botox injections, which we talked about last week. So despite his claims, Kim's lavishly spending on pricey procedures, he says she does the exact opposite when it comes to footing household bills. Are they still in that house that they put up for sale? Is the power on? Corey is also alleging she's stashing cash in her own separate bank account. It's no secret Kim and Croy's financial woes have been making headlines from the IRS to the slew, slew of um, debt collectors. Everyone's knocking on their door demanding what they say is they, that they are owed. To add insult to injury, Kim and Croy are stuck in a housing headache as they struggle to sell their property. With the price slashed twice, already plummeting from the initial $6 million listing to $4.5 million, it seems like they're eager to offload the burden. Needless to say, the soon-to-be exes have been at it with their on and off fighting where things reached a boiling point with a major blowout back in November. The saddest part about this story is the fact that they have four young children that they have to co-parent and raise going forward. I hope they sell this home, but I think even with the sale of this home, they're going to take a major loss because at the end of the day, I think they owe a lot more than what they're going to end up getting for this home. I feel for those kids. I feel for the kids. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. You bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll ask you. Follow my lead. Just watch the shoes. Gotta turn the heat up. To get this cool. 